Of course, we have to begin our history course with Ethiopia, the main coffee country of the world and the cradle of all coffee cultures of mankind. You are probably well acquainted with the legend of Shepherd Kaldi and his famous goats. And in our first lesson, we will analyze the full version of this famous story. The word legend should not mislead us, because despite certain literary nature of the term, it is highly likely that in reality everything happened just like that. Over the years of my contacts with people from the coffee world, it has never failed to amaze me how few experts know the full version of this legend. Not just its abridged version, according to which goats tasted the famous fruits and started to leap and jump excitedly. The shepherd was surprised, brought the fruits home, roasted them, and so the coffee was discovered. You will find this story on the internet, but despite its beauty, it is absolutely incomplete, because it does not explain how people began to make coffee. After all, the goats couldn't cook it, right? How was it roasted? How was it ground? How did it all happen? So in Ethiopia, they told me the full version of this legend where all bits fall into their proper places. It explains the real truth of origination of coffee that later conquered the world. This happened somewhere in the 8th, 10th century AD. At that time, they created Holy Roman Empire in Europe, and the Maya civilization in America was at the peak of its prosperity and glory. But in southern Ethiopia, then Abyssinia, those were goats who started it all. The goats, we must pay tribute to them, indicated Kaldi that there was something magic in those unknown berries. On making his discovery, Kaldi picked up the berries, brought them home and showed them to his wife. His wife also liked the berries. However, researchers strongly suspect that at first she liked the taste, but by no means the invigorating effect, just because the skin of a coffee fruit tastes sweetish. The woman said it was a message from heaven and that Kaldi should take those magical fruits to the nearest monastery. He did so, but the monks were not as optimistic as the shepherd or his wife. The rector who tasted coffee instantly called it a devilish creation and angrily threw the berries into fire. This is where the most important things started, things that are related to our trade. In the fire, the coffee beans roasted and started to produce an incredible aroma. You know how freshly roasted coffee smells. This magical fragrance can really be sometimes mistaken for devilishness. The monks were even more scared. They took the smoldering beans from the fire and began to trample them, thereby crushing and therefore grinding them into powder. But as the coffee continued to smolder, they collected the fuming leftovers and put them in a jug and, for complete certainty, flooded them with water in order to properly extinguish the beans. And here we come to the final and the most important phase of preparation of the drink. Coffee was kept in the jug for several days and, accordingly, it brewed. Then one of the monks incidentally tried it, thinking it was just water. A brisk night followed, which the monk passed in prayers, and his admiration was boundless, because his brain worked clearly and vigorously. Both taste and effect of the newfound drink were fully approved by the colleagues, who admired all night the invigorating effect of this incredible potion, which later helped them stay awake during night prayers. And so coffee, as a coffee drink, started its triumphant procession around the world. Would you agree that this version is different in terms of its amplitude from a simple story like the goats tried the berries and cheers, so coffee was discovered? I would very much like that you fully realize the length of this legend and how complete it is now in explaining the genesis of coffee as a drink.